The distribution of worldwide wind wave heights is transforming. According to a 2019 paper in Science, wind speed increases over Earth's southernmost oceans, consequent upon surface warming, have led to amplifications there in wave height of some 30 centimeters since 1985 for the largest 10% of waves. And although rising wave heights are also manifesting in the northern hemisphere, particularly toward high latitudes, amplification in southern seas is more intense because the southern hemisphere hosts more uninterrupted ocean surface area than the northern, giving waves longer fetches over which to grow in size and strength. This is significant for maritime worlds in the southern hemisphere, with bigger waves arriving at harbors, coastlines, but also elsewhere, as the southern ocean is the source for many swell patterns worldwide. The southern hemisphere, with more oceanicity than the north, may also make it a harbinger of what is to come, and what is, in fact, already happening, on an increasingly climate-morphing, sea-surfaced planet. In theory from the south, Jean and John Komaroff argue that northern, that is, European and American, social histories, tendencies, and theories may be inadequate to apprehend the motivating forces of the world today which they see most starkly represented in the countries of the Global South. Meg Samuelson and Charn Lavery seek to develop a parallel account for what they call the Oceanic South. They write, quote, The southern region of the globe is most readily conceived of as what is bound by the longitudinal lines of imperial and metropolitan domination, or described by the curvier Brant line as comprising the poorer nations but it might also be defined by the relatively vast maritime expanses that distinguish the Southern Hemisphere." Unquote. The Komarovs suggest that the Global South and its geographies have been treated in social theory as, quote, a place of parochial wisdom, of antiquarian traditions, of exotic ways and means, and, above all, of unprocessed data, reservoirs of raw fact, unquote. rather than, as they might be, prescient pointers to directions world fairs might be taking. Think, then, of the rising wave heights in the oceanic south as data that underscore the changes coming in the global ocean, stronger storms, surges that inundate coastal communities. Waves, of course, are often treated as symbols for fast-arriving, inevitable futures. Think of any number of wave disaster movies. The futures waves bring are not, of course, only environmentally animated ones, but also curled together with the effects of human overreaching, greed, and denial. Today's Anthropocene, Plantationocene, Capitalocene, and Militariocene oceans, overfished, acidifying, warming, irradiated, are nothing if not hybrid nature culture, material semiotic forces that churn political economic processes into the stir, surge, and spray of the sea. <laughs>